Good morning or good afternoon everybody and welcome to the Indosoft webinar about graphical interface and linked symbols. My name is Fabio Terezino, I'll be the host for the webinar today. And uh, in the agenda, first I'll provide a brief overview about the internal architecture of Indosoft Web Studio, <coughs> just to position the graphical interface and how it communicates with the other modules from the product. <coughs> And then we'll dive into linked symbols. Uh, first, just the goals and benefits, what's the main concept, why linked symbols are useful. Uh, and then we'll spend some time in the design. So how to create linked symbols, how to manipulate them, modify linked symbols, uh, create uh, custom properties, different syntaxes, what to do, what not to do. It's going to be the, the most uh, hands-on part of the webinar, and along with uh, those descriptions, I will switch to the product and I will demonstrate uh, how to interact with linked symbols. Uh, then I will talk about runtime editions and uh, what features are supported in each runtime editions from the graphical point of view. And same thing for the thin clients, an overview about the types of thin clients we have and the graphical interfaces supported by each one of them. Then uh, I will mention the Indosoft online store and, and show you the link to get to the store where you can find uh, some pre-built linked symbols uh, free of charge for you in addition to the linked symbols readily available in the product. And then I will open for Q&A. So if you have any questions, please feel free to write them at the WebEx bar uh, on the top of your monitor. You can select chat or expand uh, to the right the WebEx bar and go to Q&A and just write your question at any moment. And by the end of the webinar, I will address uh, all your questions. With that, just getting started, let's talk a little bit about the internal architecture of Indosoft Web Studio. So in Indosoft, we, we have two main processes uh, for typical applications. One is called studiomanager.exe, and this is the module that runs in background. So everything that's not the graphical interface runs in this process called studiomanager.exe. The core component of this uh, process is what we call the tag database engine. Uh, and we have several tasks, several threads connected to this tag database engine, uh, such as the background task, which is responsible for all, the, uh, all those tasks, alarms, trains, recipes, reports, math, script, and schedule. We have the OPC XMLDA, OPC UA client, the driver runtime, the OPC DA client, database ERP, TCP IP client, TCP IP server, and others. I didn't uh, describe all of them here. I'll switch really quickly to the development environment of Indosoft Web Studio. When you go to home and tasks, each one of those tasks here is one of those threads, one of those tasks connected to the tags database. And again, I didn't illustrate all of them in the diagram, uh, but, but you have the, the most uh, commonly used there. Uh, and all those threads, they run in parallel, in quotes. So that there is a multitasking system going on. And what happens is each one of those tasks are responsible for one specific functionality, and they exchange data with the tags database by exception, so only when tags change of values. For example, uh, the driver runtime. If you configure drivers, native drivers for communication in the software studio, each driver will be communicating with the PLCs or IOs, whatever it's configured to communicate with. And when it receives a new value, and only when it receives a new value, if, if one tag changes of value or quality or timestamp, then the driver runtime sends the updated information to the tags database. And it's done. It's unaware of the other tasks. The tags database engine being the core 
the, the, the core of Studio Manager is aware uh, of any tags used at this moment by any other task. So if you configure a particular tag in an alarm worksheet, as soon as the tags engine receives a tag change for the driver, for the tag X, for example, the tags engine sends a message to the background task indicating the tag X changes of value. And then the background task creates the alarm. Uh, the online alarm, the history alarm, depends on the, depending on your configuration. So there is a, a high level of independency among the tasks, and all the tasks are always 100% synchronized with tag values because they all share the same tags database engine, the, the same tag values in memory. Now, the graphical interface, as you see here, is decoupled from the Studio Manager. All those tasks here, including the tags database engine, they run in backgrounds. They do not provide any graphical interface. So the graphical interface is an independent process, and it communicates with the Studio Manager through the TCP IP server runtime task from Studio Manager. So this link here between the graphical interface and Studio Manager is over TCP IP, which gives us a lot of flexibility to run the graphical interface on the same computer where Studio Manager is running, where the runtime is running, or in a remote computer. And then it is what we call a thin client solution. There are different modules that support the graphical interface. So one is called the local viewer. The local viewer is an independent process called viewer.exe, and it does communicate with the studio manager via TCP IP. So going back to the development environment, if I create a screen here, anything dummy like a, a circle, and I'll make this circle blink according to the tag blink slow. And I save it with the name main screen, for example. When I hit run, Indosoft is going to start two processes. One process is the studio manager, which runs in parallel, in background. And if I go to home tasks, it started the core runtime. You can think as the tags engine which is always automatic, you cannot even change to manual. The background task, which was set to automatic, and the TCP IP server to exchange data with uh, the thin clients. And the viewer is an independent process, and the viewer is the process <coughs> that executes the screen. If I come here and I hit Alt F4 to close the viewer, the viewer is gone, the graphical interface is gone, but Studio Manager is still running. The background task is running, the TCP IP server is running. You can even see them running here in the tray bar. The background task is running, the TCP IP server is running. So if I come here and hit stop, then I stop the background task and the TCP IP server, and now the runtime is shut down. So there are two independent processes, even when you run the viewer locally, but we start both processes, the viewer and the studio manager, automatically when you run the application. So it looks like a single component. Now, since the viewer is an independent process and it communicates with the studio manager even locally via TCP IP, uh, when you run this viewer.exe, in a remote computer, it becomes what we call the Secure Viewer Thin Client. It's just another instance of the graphical interface running on the same computer or in a remote computer and communicating with Studio Manager with your runtime station via TCP IP. So the Secure Viewer Thin Client is exactly the same viewer that runs locally when you run the application locally in your computer. It just happens to, in most cases, be running in a remote computer. That's why we support 100% of the graphical interface, uh, both in the local viewer and in secure viewer thin clients. 
We also have the web team client, the ability to visualize the application with a remote web browser, being Internet Explorer. Uh, internally, the, the component Internet Explorer hosts a plugin, which is pretty much the source code of the viewer module. So the web team client also supports virtually 100% of the graphical interface supported by Indosoft Web Studio. And we have the SMA Thin Client, which is also the ability to access the graphical interfaces from a remote web browser, but this one being platform agnostic. So supporting not only Internet Explorer, but also Chrome, Safari, on Windows, on uh, iPads, iPhones, Android devices. So it's a platform agnostic web thin client solution called Studio Mobile Access. Regardless of the type of graphical interface used to access the graphical screens, and by the way, they are not mutually exclusive. You could have all of them happening at the same time on the different browsers, on different stations. They all communicate with Studio Manager through the TCP IP server. And everything that we're going to see here and talk about is uh, the graphical interface, so everything will be executed by those modules in purple. The local viewer, the secure viewer thing client, the web thing client, or the SMA thing client. And those graphical interfaces will exchange tag values with Studio Manager via TCP IP. Just as a quick note, your project configuration files is loaded by Studio Manager locally on the same computer. Your Studio Manager runtime and your project are typically on the same computer. And remote thin clients can access the, the files directly from the project configuration files if it is running on the same computer like the local viewer or through a third-party web server like the Microsoft IIS. Very well, now let's dive into linked symbols per se. So what is a linked symbol? What is the uh, goals? What are the benefits for you to create linked symbols? The whole idea of linked symbols is to provide what we call native object-oriented configuration in a user-friendly environment. The idea is that you can create your own custom objects with your own properties and functionality and animations, store them to your own custom library, and reuse them in many different places within the same screen, within the same project, or even through different projects. So it improves the productivity because you do not have to recreate all the animations, all the configurations for each instance of this object. You design the symbol, the model for your object just once, and then you deploy the symbol several times. Like in this example here, I built the symbol for a wind turbine with the alarm indication, with the label, the production information, the rotation for, for the symbol, uh, shadow, change of colors. And I built this complex object just once. Uh, and after that, all I have to do is go to the library, bring a new instance of this object, place on the screen, and assign one tag to the object, or the number of tags that uh, I define in the object. So I do not have to keep redesigning the animation, the, the, the animations, the, the drawings, the, uh, the tags, the, the internal architecture of the object. Uh, it also improves productivity because after, we call the linked symbols, because after you create your master and you create instances of this master throughout your application, uh, each one of those instances of the object are still linked to the master, which means that if you go back to the library and you change something on the master object, if you change color, change the drawings, uh, add some functionality, change fonts, whatever it is, those changes are automatically replicated to all the instances of this object throughout the whole application. So, for example, let's say you built a symbol for a valve, 
and you defined on the master symbol that when the valve is closed it should be red and when it's open it should be green and then you use this valve throughout the whole application hundreds of instances for this valve when you go to the startup then the user claims that their standard for closed is not red it is yellow you can go back to the master symbol change the color just once in the master symbol and when you save it all the instances all the valves throughout the whole project now use yellow instead of uh, red for closed state so you can have huge uh, time saving using this functionality to change just once and automatically update all the instances of that object throughout the whole project it also improves quality by enforcing consistency throughout the project so since all the instances of the symbol derivate from the same master they all have exactly the same look and feel the same proportions the same font the same everything so uh, it, it makes the application look more professional and more consistent consistent throughout all the screens and the whole project and if you share uh, symbols throughout different projects from the SCADA for the HMIs for the mobile devices you enforce consistency even across different applications on different devices it provides a lot of flexibility you can create your own symbols when you install Windows Soft. we have dozens and dozens of symbols pre-created for you but you can always create your own or modify the existing ones to your specific needs and there are options for you to create the symbol in your project and export it to the product library so you can reuse the symbol in different projects so those are pretty much the goals the benefits the reason why we created linked symbols and if used properly they they can be quite powerful and also keep in mind that when you should use linked symbol and the answer is whenever you can isolate uh, one object or a set of components that are used more than once in the same application so it would make sense to create this uh, object or this group of objects just once and then replicate it several times just changing tags for what we call custom properties the link symbols <coughs> in the soft are provided in two libraries there is what we call the system library uh, the system symbols library which is uh, the library of symbols available in the product they are available for all the projects that you create in that computer and each symbol uh, is typically one uh, file or, or at least one main file with the extension SYM sim uh, and they are stored under the Indosoft installation folder in this subfolder symbol and then you can have all the symbols there and you can even create subfolders like you see here for different types of symbols then <clears throat> when you create symbols in your project or when you bring symbols from the system library to the project library they are copied from the product directory to your project directory under the symbol subfolder of your project and as you see here you can also create subfolders and see all your project symbols and there are tools when you create a symbol in the screen editor and use the option create link symbol it goes directly to the project symbols when you open the library go to system symbols and double click to import a symbol to your project it's automatically copied to the project symbol as well and if you create or modify a symbol and you want to share it with different projects then you can right click on the symbol and use the option send, send to system symbols and Indosoft copies your symbol from the project to the library so the bottom line is you have two libraries one for the product which is generic for all the projects and as soon as you use the, the symbol in your project it comes to your project subfolder and is encapsulated uh, into your project in the subfolder symbol so let's switch to the product 
and show how it works in the real world. So uh, I have a new application here. I have no tags. I just created this new screen. If I come here to project symbols under the graphics tab, I have no project symbols. And if I come here to graphics, I can go to libraries symbols. And here you see the two libraries I was talking about, the project symbols and the system symbols. Since it, since it is a new project, if I go to project symbols, it's empty. I have not created any link symbol or I have not brought any link symbol to this project. But if I go to system symbols, I have several folders, several groups, and several symbols on the product directory. Because when you install in the software studio, we bring all those symbols to you. Then you can pick any symbol, like uh, I'm gonna pick here in sliders, this slider, place it into the screen, and now automatically Indusoft copies this symbol from the product library into the project library. And now here in project symbols slider, I have the slider 01. And if I double click on the symbol, I can see that this symbol is under the subfolder symbol of the project. And then on the folder sliders, slider 01.sim is the name of the file. So this is one way to bring symbols from the product to the project. As simple as going to graphics, symbols, pick whatever symbol you want from the system symbols library, double click, and just click on the screen to bring the symbol to the screen. That simple. Now uh, that you have the, the symbols on the screen, by the way, those two symbols are identical, so they share the same uh, project symbol here called slider 01. I can also create symbols from the scratch. So I can come here and just to create something quick, let's say this circle, and I want to change the color of the circle according to the tag, let's call motor A, for example create this new tag. When motor A is red, it's going to be 0. Green is going to be 1. And then I create a button here. And when I click on the button, I want to toggle the value of motor A. Now, let's say that I want to use this interface here in several places in my application. So I can select all the objects that are part of my symbol, right click, and say create linked symbol. I gave a name to my symbol, like motor control, for example, and there you go. Now that group of objects becomes the symbol motor control, and as you see here in project symbols, it's right here under my project, motor control. If I go to the library of symbols, under project symbols, I have my motor control. And I can double click and bring new instances of this symbol to the application. If I save the application and run, now I have two instances of this symbol. And let's say I want to change something in this particular symbol. I can right click here and go to edit linked symbol to edit the master. I can change something in the symbol, like the example I gave before. Instead of red, I want to change to yellow. Save it. Then I just have to resave the screen where the symbol is used. If the symbol was used in several screens, you can simply run the verify uh, command to resave all the screens automatically. And now, both symbols or as many instances of this symbol I have throughout the application will be updated uh, with the color yellow instead of red. I don't have to change each one of them. And it could be more than just changing colors. I can come here to edit symbol and add new components. Have this object here, uh, change the fill color to blue, and now all the instances of the symbol throughout the whole application will have this new drawing, this new component. And once I'm good with the symbol and I want to share the symbol uh, with other projects, I can right click here on 
graphics, project symbols. Right click on the symbol you want and hit the button Send to System Symbols. You can define a folder and a name for your symbol. As you see here, it's going to the products directory. And if I hit Save, this symbol will be saved into the project symbol. So for any project in this computer, when you go to System Symbols, you would see your own symbols here. So you can customize even the project symbol. Back to the slide, the three actions, create link symbols. You just build your objects on the screen, one or several objects with or without dynamics, right click and go to create link symbols, to create a symbol in the project library. To add a new symbol uh, to the screen, you simply go to the library symbols, pick any symbol here from the system library, double click, and click on the screen to add this symbol to your project. As simple as that. And to bring a symbol from the project to the system symbol, you just right click on your symbol here under project symbols and choose the option send to system symbols. So those are the three actions illustrated in this uh, slide to create new symbols, bring system symbols to the project symbols, or export project symbols to the system symbols. Just one note, sometimes you, you bring several uh, linked symbols to the application, but then one of them or a few of them you want to unlink, you want to become independent from the master. So you can right click and select the option unlink link symbol. Now it is just regular objects on the screen. It's lost the link with the main symbol. So now I can make changes to this instance individually. Like for instance, brown here, save. And as you see here, it is independent from the others. At least this object here. So sometimes you want to unlink link symbols to make specific instances independent, but then you lose all the, the advantages to keep the link with the master and make changes on the master to replicate throughout all the instances. But bottom line, it's possible to unlink link symbols after placing them on the screens. Custom properties. <clears throat> I created those two linked symbols here on the screen to toggle the motor, but in the real world, most likely, I do not want two different symbols to affect exactly the same tags. I might want the same look and feel to uh, turn motors on and off, but each instance of the symbol most likely should be used to turn a different motor on or off. So in Indosoft, we have what we call custom properties for linked symbols. A custom property is nothing more than an alias that you create in your linked symbol telling Indosoft that this property can have different values for each instance of this symbol. So the syntax for custom properties is a hash sign or number sign, a custom name for the alias, the custom property name, whatever name you want to give to your property, like my motors, motor commands, bananas, doesn't matter. It's just a name. You follow the same uh, naming conventions for tags, up to 1,024 characters, letters and numbers and underscore. The first character cannot be a number, and it's not case sensitive. So this is the name of the custom property. Column, and optionally, a default value for this property. And properties can have four different types of values. Can be a number, like 10. Can be a string text, like on between double quotes or off or any text you want. Could be a tag name, so it's dynamic. Uh, the, the value of the, the property will be the value of that tag. Or can be an expression between parentheses. So let's see how, uh, and by the way, the behavior during the, the runtime for the custom properties is that during the runtime, Indosoft ignores everything between the hash sign 
and the column, including the hash sign and the column character. Uh, it executes only what you have after the column character. So during the runtime, the custom property uh, and its delimiters, the hash and the column, are completely ignored, are just like if they do not exist. You define them only for development. So let's see how, how to make it work. I'm going to edit this linked symbol. And here in the caller, instead of hard coding motor A, I'm going to create a custom property. So to create a custom property, I begin with hash uh, sign. Then the name of my property could be motor command, for example, and column. That's the minimum I have to have there. Hash pound, the name of the property, and column. I do that on the colors, and I will do exactly the same thing here on toggle tag, motor command. So I save it. Now, when I click on each instance of this link symbol, Indosoft shows automatically to me the custom property that I created called motor command. And now for each instance of this symbol, I can assign a different value. In this case, case, I want to assign the motor A tag for this one. And for this one, I want to assign a new tag. Let's create motor B. I want to assign motor B. So we save it. We go to the runtime. And now I have the same symbol, but as you see here, I can change the value of each one of those symbols individually. And if I want to modify the symbol, I can keep modifying the symbol. So I go to Edit Link Symbol, and here in the caption of the button, here in the command, I have the property Motor Command. And here in the caption, I might want to show the value of the motor command. So just define motor command between curly braces. Save. And here you have 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, and motor B independent from motor A. It is a simple symbol, just one custom property, but you can use this concept and create as many symbols as you want. So this is about custom properties, and each custom property needs to have, when you create a custom property with a particular name like uh, motor symbol, motor command, whatever it is, every time that you use this custom property name in the symbol, it must have the same default value, which could be nothing, new, just like in my example, or could be a number, a string, a tag name, or an expression. But for a given custom property, if you use this custom property more than once within the same object, just like I did in my example, it must be identical everywhere. So in other words, I cannot say motor command and let's say blink slow here and leave in blank here. It's, gonna, it's not going to work properly during the runtime. The software is going to take one as a reference and the others will not be linked to the same property. So either they are all in blank or they are all pointing to blink slow or to the same value, to the same default value. Okay? Now, there is one exception to this rule. And the exception, oh, by the way, uh, he, here is just some examples. Uh, for custom properties that are valid and invalid. So my property without hash sign, without column, is not a custom property name. You are missing the hash sign and the column. Hash sign, my property, is invalid as well. You always need to have the column as well. My property column is invalid. You always need to have the hash sign. Hash sign, my property column, is correct. And the default value is nothing. But this is a correct custom property. You can assign a value for each instance of the symbol. Here is a custom property with a default numeric value, with a default string value, with a default tag name, just like I used in my demo. 
and with an expression being the default value. Now, there is, uh, as I mentioned, all the custom properties, when you use a custom property within a linked symbol, all, every time you use this custom property, it must have the same default value, with one exception to this rule, which is when you assign custom properties, this custom property to different members of the same class name. And let's see why it's uh, useful and how it works. Let's create a class tag. So first I'll create a class, let's say class PID, and I have set point PV MV, for example. And now I go to tags, and I create a tag, for instance, PID, <coughs> and let's say I have 10, uh, the array size 10, so 11 instances of the PID, because I have the, the position zero as well, from the class PID. So now I have PID index one dot set point, PID index two dot set point, PID index one dot PV, in PID index two dot PV, and so on and so forth, right? Now let's say I want to build my symbol, and I'll create something quick here from the scratch. So I create this rectangle, and I will say the background color will be, let's say, this black. And I want to have a bar graph here. And I want this bar graph to be yellow. I want to create a custom property here. So I use hash pound. I will say my PID property, whatever name you want to give, column. And as the full value, I'm going to say PID, the tag PID, index one dot set point, for example. And to change the value of this set point during the runtime, I'm going to create, just to do something quick here, let's say the height could be 150, and create this object here with position. And I want to say that vertically, I want to move this object 150 uh, pixels to the top according to the value of the tag my, P, uh, my PID property, PID1.setPoint. So far, is exactly the same default value to this custom property, my PID property. But now I can create another bar graph here. Bring to front. And now I'm gonna change this one to be the PV. Change the color here to green, for example. And this one will be the PV as well. Now I have the same custom property pointing to PID1.PV and here to PID1.SP. I just broke the rule that all the custom properties have to point to the same default value. But I can break this rule if and only if they are pointing to different members of the same class, the same class tag. So now MV, change the color, and here MV. So to create the linked symbol, I can just select those objects, right click, create linked symbol, give a name to the linked symbol, like my PID, and now I have here my PID index one. If I come here to symbols and go to my project symbols, I have my PID, and click here and change either the main tag name or the array position, let's say to two. And by the way, I just realized I did something wrong here. I forgot to enable the slider. So I can enable the slider in the symbol once. And by doing that, all instances of the symbol are updated. So now if I go to the runtime, I can change the values of PID index one and PID index two individually on each instance of this symbol. So that's how powerful this, uh, this feature is. You could have several members 
of a class tag associated to the linked symbol. And when you bring an instance of this linked symbol to the screen, all you have to do is change the main tag name or the array index. And now you are pointing all the members from this uh, class to a new tag name or a new array position. I do not have to change set points, PV, and MV individually for each instance of this symbol. So some examples here. Uh, custom property, main tag A, main tag B, and main tag C. This is an invalid syntax because the custom property must be linked to the same main tag name. And here the main tag name is different. Here is a correct syntax. I have the same custom property, the same main tag name, and different members. This is OK. Here is invalid again. I have the same main tag name to the custom property, but I have different array positions. This is invalid. But here is a correct syntax again. For a given custom property, same main tag name, same array position, different members. This is allowed. So having said that, uh, those are pretty much the features for linked symbols. And as you know, Indosoft supports different runtime editions. And uh, this is a, a great advantage of Indosoft, the fact that we designed a single development environment. And you design the application once, but then you can download the application and deploy this application anywhere. Any device running Windows CE, Windows Embedded Compact, or Windows Embedded Standard, or Windows XP, Windows 7, Windows 8, 2003 Server, 2008 Server, 2012 Server, 32 bits, 64 bits. So you design once and you deploy anywhere. And we have three runtime products and three runtime licenses. One is called CView for Windows CE only, Windows Embedded Compact only. Embedded View for Windows Embedded Standard only. And the complete Windows Software Studio that runs on Windows Embedded Standard or any other Windows operating system except Windows CE. <coughs> Sorry. So there are different footprints and different prices for those runtimes and a very few uh, graphical limitations in embedded view and C view, which are summarized in this table. And we have this information in details in the manual as well. So as you see, the Indus Software Studio supports absolutely everything. And embedded view and C view supports absolutely everything from the graphical interface with a few caveats which are described in this table. So embedded view and C view runtimes, which have a lower price, do not support .NET controls, uh, do not allow the trend control to export configuration to a file, to paint the, the area below the train fans with a color, uh, it does not support what we call enhanced graphics. Uh, here, if you go to Project Viewer, you have this option, enhanced, uh, enable enhanced graphics, pretty much to have anti-aliasing and increase the look and feel of native objects. For performance reasons, we disable this option on embedded view and C view, which are typically running devices with very little horsepower. And there are a few functionalities that are supported with small limitations, like the uh, Studio Mobile Access uh, uh, ha has some limitations on embedded view and C view. Auto screen scaling is supported, not automatically, but manually. Uh, you can change the application resolution by executing the project, com the home convert resolution uh, option, but the, the resolution is not adjusted automatically during the runtime. Uh, few effects are supported by rectangles, linked pictures and background pictures support bitmaps, JPEGs, and PNGs. Uh, hints are available uh, for the tag, but not as a tooltip. Command events do not support the multi-touch uh, events. Rotation is supported for 
bitmaps and polygons only, sorry, for polygons and lines only. And multi-touch gestures are supported with some limitations. And again, the technical manual describes each one of the limitations in details. But this is a very small subset of all the graphical interface, about 95 plus percent of the graphical interface is supported across all the platforms. I'm just putting this table here to keep in mind when you're creating linked symbols for embedded view or C view, uh, keep in mind that those minor limitations apply. And Indosoft supports different types of thin clients as well. So a thin client is a remote station, not the runtime station necessarily, but a remote station, uh, which has TCP access to the runtime station where you're running the software studio, where you're running Studio Manager. And from this remote station, you have access to the graphical interface, even though you do not have to install the product in the software studio, the application, the configuration files, nor the license on the thin client stations. That's why we call them the thin clients. So we support three types. The first type is the web thin clients, when, uh, which is supported on Windows. You use Internet Explorer web browser as the host of the application, and we use a plug-in technology to display the, uh, the screens. So this solution is useful when you, you or a supervisor or a manager wants to eventually open the browser in the computer, see what's going on, and then close the browser and do something else in the computer. The Secure Viewer Team Client is similar from the technology point of view. It is still for Windows. But instead of using Internet Explorer, you install an app on the computer uh, from Indosoft called Secure Viewer. In the bin folder of Indosoft Web Studio, there is a file called thinclientsetup.exe. You just copy this file to the thin client station and run it there uh, and configure the IP address of the server and the URL for the server. Then when you run it, it connects to the server and shows the screen in full screen mode. So the end user cannot tell the difference between the actual server and the secure viewer thin client. It's very useful for stations where, uh, like large machines, and you want to have the application in one of them, and the other terminals are just secure viewer thin clients. You can even use the security, security system from Indosoft to lock the operator on the application and prevent him or her from closing the application, going to the desktop. That's why we call secure viewer thin client. And can, uh, if you have several monitors and you want to run one instance of the graphical interface in each one of those monitors, you can use Secure Viewer Team Clients as well. And we have the Studio Mobile Access, the SMA Team Client, which conceptually is very similar to the Web Team Client, uh, but it is platform agnostic. It runs on Windows, but also on Android, on uh, iOS. Uh, supports many different web browsers, Internet Explorer, Chrome, Safari, any web browser that supports HTML5, which is the underlying technology for this solution. So you don't have to download any plugins to the Thin Client Station. The Web Thin Client and the Secure Viewer Thin Client support 100% of the graphical interface, so absolutely anything you, you build in your linked symbols will be supported across those platforms. And the Studio Mobile Access today has a few limitations that we are working to overcome over time. As you see here in this table, all the shapes, active objects, data objects, libraries, and animations are supported both for the Web Team Clients and the Secure Viewer Team Clients. And most of them are already supported by SMA Team Clients. With a few exceptions, uh, which are the push button control, which, by the way, you can create exactly the same functionality using the regular uh, button with the command animation and color animation. The list box, which, by the way, you can use the same functionality using rectangles with uh, uh, some animations behind them. The alarm event control, trend control, and grid control, which are under development, 
and we have built-in screens on the SMA for alarms and grids, for alarms and trains, so you can have alarms and trains functionalities. So even the, those interfaces that we do not support yet, uh, there are workarounds, there are other ways to provide this functionality. Uh, but when you create linked symbols, if you want to use those linked symbols in SMA today, keep in mind that those minor limitations apply. Plus, .NET controls and ActiveX controls, we do not plan to support them on uh, the SMA Team Client because SMA Team Client is by definition platform agnostic and uh, completely Team Client does not require the installation of any plugin and .NET controls and ActiveX controls are technologies only for the Microsoft platform. Uh, but all the other minor limitations here in yellow are under development and eventually will be supported on the SMA. Having said that, as I said before, when you install in the software studio, we automatically have here in the library of symbols, several symbols in different categories available to you. Anything from meters to motors to pilot lights to switches uh, to tanks and many different symbols. And in addition to that, uh, we keep releasing new symbols and making them available on the Indusoft online store, which you can access by going to indusoft.com, click on the link store and free add-ons, or just go to this link directly. So I'm gonna open that interface, that web page quickly here. So I can go to indusoft.com, and go here, so to store, free add-ons, and you see several symbols here available to download from the website. And they are simply linked symbols. They have instructions here on how to use them, how to download them. All you have to do is download the symbols and extract them to the symbol subfolder of in the software studio and use them just like any other symbol available for in the software studio. So feel free to check for new symbols and reuse those symbols. When we re release a newer version of Indusoft, Indusoft version 8 is coming this year yet, uh, we're gonna incorporate all those symbols into the newer version of the product as well, by default. With that, I'd like to open for Q&A, so if you have any questions, feel free to write them at the chat box or Q&A box on the uh, bar, on the top of your WebEx bar, at the top of your monitor, and I'll be happy to address them. <coughs> uh, so there is one question. To, uh, to reference the property in VB script, do you use curly braces around the property tag name? And the full value, excellent, excellent question. So when you can use uh, custom properties in scripts as well. So if I go edit this linked symbol, so back here, instead of using toggle here, I can go to script, for instance, VB script, and have something like if. And now I want to use my custom property. In VB script, before using the custom property, you use the dollar sign to indicate it's gonna be an Indusoft component, and then the custom property column, and if you want a default value, the default value. So I can say if motor command is equal to zero, then dollar sign motor command column equals to one, else motor command equals to zero. So remember that during the runtime, Indusoft is gonna eliminate everything between the pound sign, the hash sign, and the column. So when you assign a tag name for this custom property, Indusoft is gonna stay with the dollar sign in the tag name that you assign for this custom property. So I can save here, and I have here the same custom properties, and it behaves the same way. 
So excellent question. Uh, pretty much when you want to use linked uh, custom properties in a VB script, script, you just use dollar sign, the uh, hash pound, the name of your custom property, colon, and optionally, if you want, a default value for this custom property, or could be in blank, no default value. Very good. Other here. Uh, if I use a link symbol from the library, is there a way that I can change the properties like color uh, on just a single instance of the symbol? Uh, there are different ways to do that, so let's let's do that. Like uh, I brought, I have this uh, symbol here. I go to symbols. And I go here to properties. I bring this symbol here to the screen. And I want to change the, the color only for this instance. One way of doing that is to unlink the symbol, change the color here. Let's say purple. Save. And now it's changed only to this particular instance here. However, now it is unlinked. So if I make changes on the master, it will not affect this object. And sometimes you want to be able to change, to keep the symbol linked. So if you make changes, it's replicated. But you want to be able to customize the, the color as well. So you can do something like this. Let's say uh, that we have an object. Let's create another custom property here called color code. And let's say the default value is 1 times uh, motor command. And let's say that 0 is yellow. So when motor command is 0, the, the limit is going to be 0. When motor command is 1, it's going to be 1 times 1 is going to be green. But sometimes I want when the motor is 1 to be, uh, let's say, uh, this purple here, different color. And I just write two here. So for the motors that I want to be yellow, uh, yellow and purple instead of yellow and green, I just set the color code property to two. So when motor command is two, it's going to be purple, not green. Let's see how it works. So I have those two instances, and you see here the default value for color, pro for color code is 1. I create another instance, and this one I'm going to change the value to 2. Save. So this one switches between yellow and purple, and the other two between yellow and green. So that's one way to change colors for one instance of the, the link symbol. So either you unlink it or you use additional properties in the color expression to define on each instance what is the color or set of colors you would like to use. Good. Uh, those were the two questions we had and we are reaching here the, the one hour. So. I would like just to show a few information on how to contact Indosoft for licensing for technical support. Uh, you have additional contact information here around the world. Uh, the, all this information is available on the website as well. We also have the online chat free of charge on the website. Uh, this webinar, as several other webinars, are available on the website as well. Just go to Indosoft.com under Support, Videos Library, and there are several uh, videos, several webinars uh, recorded and available to download or for online streaming from the website. Even the complete training manual is available free of charge on the Indosoft uh, website. So with that, I would like to thank each one of you and all of you. Uh, I hope the webinar brought information that can be useful for, for your project. And as always, if you have further questions or comments, please do not hesitate to contact us. Thank you, everybody, for uh, attending the webinar, for using the product, and I hope to see you in the next webinar. 
Thank you, everybody.